During the last decade, the indie games have been improving in quality at such a rapid rate that more than a few have managed to become really big in the gaming community. I don't have to name them, but if you are watching this video, you have probably played some of them or even most of them and are looking for that next great indie gem. My name is Peter and I'm glad to be able to showcase to you half a dozen contestants for that lofty status with some honorable mentions in between. I have chosen games which you yourself can try out as they have demo versions which are often on Steam and especially during Steam Fest events. I have access to some of them in full, so some gameplay you can see here is from those versions. You might remember I mentioned some of these in my lists of upcoming games and you can see many more such games using the link up there and below. Here I not only want to give you more relevant info about them, but also show you the newest gameplay and talk about some of my impressions. The first game on this list ended up on top because of the level of originality in its story, setting and gameplay mechanics. Not only does it look great graphically, but it manages to bring to life something that is a pure fantasy story many of us thought of in our childhood or read and watched in our later years living on the back of a giant animal. And this isn't just you, it's your whole village along for the ride. The name of this game is The Wandering Village, a settlement builder with exploration elements and a good amount of production chains, in development by Stray Phone Studios with a release date sometime during this summer. What I really enjoyed in it was the feeling of adventure mixed with micromanagement. This is because as this giant animal called Onbu moves across the map, and all of its different biomes, your village is subjected to a variety of environmental hazards and animal attacks, along with Onbu. Where other games bring disasters to you, here Onbu brings you into disasters. Be they poison spores, blood-sucking parasites or worse. On the positive side, by traveling the land you get the chance to send out scouts to occasional locations of interest, like small villages, oases, mines and the like. There you find resources, food, new tribe members and even ancient artifacts. Later you do get a way to influence the direction of travel a bit along with feeding and healing on Boo, so your interactions with the creature become a true symbiosis. The village management part of gameplay is well developed and you have several needs of your population you must take care of, like hunger, health, a place to live and so on. There is a considerable number of resources which are combined and refined as well as a full tech tree to unlock new buildings, resources and onboard related elements I mentioned before. I like that resources are limited so you won't be stockpiling massive amounts but rather making meaningful decisions about investing your hard earned scraps into upgraded homes so settlers will feel better or a new workshop to improve production. While playing the demo version of The Wandering Village, I felt like the game has serious potential and I warmly recommend you also try it out, especially since you get a horizontal gameplay slice, meaning you have almost the full gameplay available. And just to cover all the bases, I want to mention another indie game with a very similar idea, World Turtles. In this game your settlement resides on a giant turtle as it travels not on the ground but in space. Its release date is also in the summer and its developer at Recog Mission also offers a demo for you to try it out and for a more in-depth look check out the video linked up above. This next game I had the pleasure of trying out is called Ixian and there is no better description for it than Frostpunk in space. So while we wait for Frostpunk 2 to arrive we can try out Ixian's demo and enjoy that signature gameplay of resource scarcity, tough decisions, limited building space requiring careful planning, population requests, approval and unrest, technology development and map exploration. And that exploration is first practiced on locations within our actual solar system where you find different events with branching choices awaiting your little science ship but later you go on to visit and hopefully colonize other solar systems. And I say little science ship because in comparison with the space station slash starship you're commanding and building inside of, it is truly tiny. The people living inside of your ship are an actual society and require careful management especially when they voice requests to you. Keeping your chair as their leader and boss isn't a given and you have an approval rating to keep high. What left a really good impression on me in the demo are the masterfully written and voice acted monologues of your advisors and other important characters besides the impressive space station slash starship building mechanics. Administrator, 
Mr. Dolos has made it abundantly clear when it- The Tycoon is a tablet upon which we will carve our new history. Do you recognize why I have done all of this? The developers from Bulwark Studios have really done a great job with the game's multiple gameplay aspects and it's so polished it shines. As for the scale of your vessel, it sinks in after a while as you toggle between the three viewpoints, solar, outside and inside. There you have several sections of the ship to fill with all sorts of buildings, starting with resource stockpiles and workshops, then the clinic and food preparation with research labs and exterior ship parts constructors just to name a few. And it is on the outside of the Juggernaut ship where you build extra solar panels for power, a new experimental engine with which to travel the stars and other new tech. This is all researched using tech points you get from events explored by the science ship I mentioned before and there is a big tech tree, well more tech tiers arranged in circles. All this costs advanced resources crafted from basic elements which are at first gained by recycling old buildings inside the station but later acquired by sending out a mining ship. This however only works if you have first used probes to detect best mining locations. The story itself starts off hopeful but very quickly turns very grim as you might expect from a Frostpunk comparison and I cannot wait to learn more. I must admit to having played Dixian's demo four times over, discovering something new each time and having a blast even with the limited playthrough. You can even watch my in-depth video of this indie gem in the making linked up above. This one I am playing day one, bugs, issues, earthquake or Armageddon itself be damned. So if this was Frostpunk in space, let me give a short shout out to Rimworld in space. This is as simple of a description as I could give you for Star Deus, a sci-fi colony management simulator with aspects of automation, base building and space exploration by the lone dev going by Codal Linea. Here you play as artificial intelligence with robots and drones at your command but no clear objective, so you can choose what to do, build a space factory or starship, help humans create a colony or turn them, matrix style, into living batteries. This next game has a much more grounded approach to gameplay but in a magical and fantasy setting. Having a tycoon in its name, Potion Tycoon gives away its gameplay style instantly. I for one don't play tycoons that often but I have thoroughly enjoyed this one's demo as the developers from Snowhound Games did a marvelous job on the art and potion cooking mechanics. They are also behind another indie gem, Deep Sky Derelicts, a sci-fi turn-based tactical RPG which I liked very much and would recommend you try out if you're into that subgenre. In this game you are the owner of a magic shop specialized in invention, cooking, marketing and selling potions of all sorts and uses. From the regular healing potion for the adventurer who took an arrow to the knee to the more interesting potions with more flashy names and effects. After a very interesting process of inventing, preparing and cooking a potion you have to design its bottle and choose the right price so it hits the market running. Your buyers come from high and wide being wizards, sorcerers, knights, rogues and so on. To impress them with your store, you have a wide selection of furniture, some of which you have to research first, but every workplace also needs employees. You recruit yours from the market for all sorts of jobs, be that sales, research, cooking, moving supplies. They have actual skills, which develop over time, and you get to choose what will be leveled up, but their pay goes up along with that. The building aspect lets you add more levels to your shop, set up different rooms and equip them with workbenches and furniture. There are of course more nuances in the gameplay like cutting and grinding ingredients to change their effects, VIP buyers whose satisfaction can improve your store's standing, potion making competitions, other shops in the region which become your competitors and many others I didn't even manage to experience in the demo. Overall for a tycoon game which plays out inside a single shop these developers have packed it with enough features to keep you entertained for a while and I definitely was, so I recommend it to all Tycoon fans but also those of you who might be on the fence. Another game with an amazing art style in a fantasy setting which I want to mention is Oaken, a tactical turn-based roguelike game from the devs at Lucky Studios. Here you play as one of the spirits which inhabit the branches of a great oak and fight in small-scale battles on hexagonal maps to either heal or destroy that great oak. The overall map is a randomly generated world with tons of levels, bosses and events for you to discover. 
So here is another quite developed and large roguelike single player game which borrows many aspects from FTL but its developers at Cernur.tech also tried to make it more unique. I have played and showcased this game a long time ago but it has come a long way since then. It's not yet ready for release but it was able to make me rage at the RNG in my multiple attempts to go as far as I could into the story. This is Trigon's space story and here you command a spaceship and travel the galaxy while battling pirates, man-eating aliens, robots and a faction of alleged peacekeepers who keep that peace by blasting everyone, very reminiscent of Farscape TV sci-fi show. What I enjoyed about it, when I wasn't steaming out of my ears over the unforgiving combat RNG, was the decision making in each situation, the exquisite sounding weapons and space effects, ship and crew upgrades and many different weapon systems. In the demo and the preview version I was playing you only have the humans and their ship type to play with, but later devs will add more ships and alien races. There is a story which is your main mission of sorts, but you are totally free to go off the rails, pick up side missions, level up your crew in combat and many non-combat events in which your crew composition will lead to opening new dialogue choices. It is an almost Fallout-like approach, the isometric one, to conversations and event resolution. I must admit, I love that side of the game. And I also enjoy the upgrades to the ship, where you can choose to be more defensive or offensive to use a cloak or to transport bombs onto enemy ships, to send bloodthirsty aliens as your away team or just cut apart or blow up the enemy ships with all sorts of energy weapons and missiles. The combat itself is enjoyable with subsystem targeting and many weapon effects, don't get me wrong, but when your expensive missile, which takes forever to reload, misses twice in a row and you have to replay the game from the start because of it, my grey hairs get some more companions. Besides going on away missions, your crew also does a lot of jobs inside your ship. They boost the systems they work on, but also repair damage, put out fires, fight off enemies who teleport onto your ship and so on, just like in abandoned ship for example. Bottom line, I warned you, play Trigon at the risk of your own mental health. <laughs> To change up the setting and genre I want to recommend to all you RTS fans and especially those of you who want a more classical gameplay to try out TFC The Fertile Crescent. I described it as a retro age of empires in my in-depth video but it's more than that. It's locked in the bronze age and does a number of gameplay aspects differently like research is based on food generation, new villagers spawn themselves and there is no population cap among other elements. And mentioning villagers, I should talk now about TFM The First Men, a game from developers at Gathering 3 who are making a new kind of colony management and simulation which started out as a real-time 4x game. One where those villagers grow and change over time from the moment they are born to the moment they die. A very innovative trait and skill system lets you influence what kind of villagers you get before they are even conceived and you keep changing them as they grow from kids to old folks. Beyond that core gameplay, other elements are similar to what we have in Stardew Valley, Don't Starve Together, RimWorld and Oxygen Not Included. That is building of individual workbenches, homes, weapons, tools, while exploring different biomes around the map filled with flora and fauna from fantasy realms. You can send out armed parties to fight mythical creatures, collect loot and solve quests given to you by other settlements. While it did take me a while to get used to such a different way of developing my settlement and its population, I must admit I found it very refreshing and unique. I haven't played anything like it before, but if you have, please tell me in the comments. The full game has several different game modes like competitions, scenarios with unique stories and victory conditions, well-balanced maps for skirmish and freeform procedurally generated random maps for fun games. There is both single player and multiplayer with an in-game map and story editor complete with Steam Workshop support. My first attempt at playing the first man in the demo didn't go so well. I made many mistakes, but thanks to the well-designed gameplay elements I was able to learn from those mistakes quite quickly. You might say the game has a steep learning curve, but that is more due to the new and different way of villager progression and development than anything else. This unique approach is definitely one of the reasons I recommend you try this game out, but the art style is another reason you will enjoy it. Let me know what hides in the fog and what monsters you manage to defeat, because I only managed to take down some wolves and giant crabs. 
Before I get to the last game on this list, I want to use the opportunity to remind you of a remaster of Pharaoh called Pharaoh A New Era from the developers at Triskel Interactive. They made Lattice, a city building game in a Victorian steampunk universe. For Pharaoh, they are upgrading textures to 4K, the UI is getting modernized, and all the additional content from the Cleopatra Queen of Nile as well as full map and mission editor are included in this remastered release set in the sands of ancient Egypt. I now want to end the list with a very promising pixel art turn-based tactical RPG which includes mercenary company management and immersive decision making in a multi-century spanning story. This is the Iron Oath from the dev set Curious Panda Games and let me tell you what I liked about it after playing the demo. The combat itself is full of cool elements like environmental objects which can be used to deal additional damage trap or disable enemies, area of effect skills which require care for maneuvering, and fantastical spells with beautifully animated effects. There is a well worked out system of room by room movement in dungeons with occasional events which can impact your party positively and negatively. I also enjoyed the addition of management gameplay in the form of recruiting and training your fighters while also taking care of the supplies and finances. As for the story and dialogue choices, there isn't a lot you can experience in the demo, but what is there promises lots of diversity in events, situations, faction politics and city-states which should make a great basis for multiple playthroughs. Another element which will make this worthwhile is customization and specialization of your mercenaries as they rank up. Do note you go through many of them as the story lasts for a long time in game, meaning it is your company which needs to keep it standing and rating so you can keep getting contracts and missions from the various factions. This blend of management and combat works out really well in the Iron Note and from what I was able to play through it just keeps on getting better and better. Combat can be unfair sometimes, especially against many opponents but you have to think through rather than punch through such situations. For example, letting everyone take some hits to prevent your fighters from being knocked out. My friend Merchello at Turn-Based Lovers will give you a more in-depth look as the game gets close to its release date, which isn't far off. I hope you have enjoyed this look and my personal impressions of potential new indie strategy gems and you won't mind leaving a like for this video as well as a comment about which of these you think has the highest chance of being the new RimWorld, Stardew Valley or Terraria. If you haven't subscribed already and do so now, I can promise more videos like this one will show up in your feed. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.